Whatever happened to TV's Wonder Woman, Linda Carter? Well, truth be told, she's never been far away. Give me a few minutes and I'll bring you up to speed on what has been going on with this beautiful and amazingly talented lady. But first, let me introduce myself. Hi folks, my name is Dave Sundstrom, and I like to think of myself as something of a pop culture historian, especially when it comes to music, movies, and television. Simply put, I love talking about this stuff. So with that said, let's get rolling. You know, Linda Carter has always been something of a rebel. Despite studying classical dance and drama during her formative years, Linda dropped out of college to hang out with her high school rock band that went by the name of Just Us. However, within a couple of years, fame came knocking on Linda's door after winning the title of Miss World USA in 1972. That year, Linda went on to represent the United States at the Miss World pageant in London, where she finished in the final 15. In 1975, Linda was cast as the iconic DC superheroine Wonder Woman. The show ran for one season on ABC before switching networks and moving to CBS for a couple more seasons. The ABC series was set in the 40s while the CBS version was a modern day retelling. Personally, I'm more of a fan of the first season on ABC. I loved that wartime setting. The show just functioned well as a period piece. But that said, both versions of the show are a ton of fun to watch and from what I understand, Linda preferred the updated version on CBS. She thought the modern day setting provided the show with a greater variety of story opportunities. During that time, Linda also pursued a music career. Her early albums were well received here in the US, but achieved even greater popularity overseas. Of course, Linda's beauty was as much of a draw as her music was for fans all over the world. In fact, that center album cover there became a top selling poster during the late 70s. After Wonder Woman, Linda was able to avoid being typecast and continue to work in television, movies, as well as music. Linda was also a spokesmodel for Maybelline throughout the 80s and Lens Express in the 90s. Moist, wet, wonderful colors. Colors that lick your lips. Moisture with colors by Maybelline with moisturizers and a protective sunscreen to keep your lips very soft, very moist, very wet. And I think that's very wonderful. By the turn of the century, as television and movie appearances slowed down just a bit, Linda decided to do a variety of theater projects. In 2005, Linda played Mama Morton in the West End London version of Chicago. In 2006, her rendition of When You're Good to Mama was included in the box set celebrating the 10th anniversary of Chicago. And in May of 2007, Linda began touring the U.S. with her one-woman musical cabaret show titled An Evening with Linda Carter. The lovely lady to the left of Linda in the photo on your screen there is Linda's daughter, Jessie. So I said things slowed down a bit, but they did not come to a halt. A couple of roles that I remember Linda in were the 2001 independent film, Super Troopers, as well as the 2005 Disney flick, Sky High, where she played a high school principal with, you guessed it, superpowers. In 2015, Linda wrote and recorded five original songs for the video game Fallout 4, in which she herself stars. An EP of the songs from that game's soundtrack was released on iTunes in 2015 and the song Good Neighbor was nominated for Best Song by the National Academy of Video Game Trade Reviewers. Linda followed up her successful work on the Fallout 4 soundtrack with her 2018 album Red Rock and Blues. Based on the glowing reviews that I'm seeing over on Amazon, it appears that the songs on that album might be some of her finest work as a singer. And just a few months ago, Linda unexpectedly dropped another new album that was ironically titled Unexpected. Always a fan favorite at comic conventions, Linda has become even more popular with that particular audience when she signed on to play the role of the President of the United States, Olivia Marsden, on the CW Supergirl series. She has publicly stated that she really enjoys working on the show and it's even gone as far as to say working with the Supergirl crew is a heck of a lot of fun. Sticking with the world of comics, Linda is also a fan of Gal Gadot's portrayal of Wonder Woman and has worked with her to promote causes that she is passionate about. A few years back, 
the two visited the United Nations together to further women's rights and attend a ceremony celebrating Wonder Woman Day. Carter has said that she thinks that Gal is amazing. And spoiler alert, for those of you who stuck around for the end credits of Wonder Woman 1984, you know that there's a possibility that at some point in the future, Linda and Gal might get a chance to appear together on the big screen in a future Wonder Woman movie. All right, folks, I promised another classic Linda Carter TV commercial. Here it is. Look who's turning Diet 7 up. I guess you have to give up a lot to fit into your costume, huh, Linda? I don't have to give up anything, Don. Remember, I'm a star. <laughs> Besides, any diet drink can help me fit into my costume. Then why the Diet 7 up, sweetie? Because it's crisp, it's light, it doesn't have that funny diet taste. Why are you drinking it, Don? Oh, I like the taste, too. That's impossible. Why is that? Because you don't have any taste, Donnie, dear. <laughs> oh, you're a beauty. Ooh, a dandy. So that's it. Like I said, Linda has never been really too far away. For those of you who are fans of Linda's Wonder Woman, did you prefer the ABC version set in the 40s? Or did you like the CBS version that had a modern day setting? Let me know what you think in the comments section. And while you're at it, I'd love a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And I would be absolutely honored if you considered subscribing to the channel. I talk about music, movies, and mostly TV from the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly, and as always, thank you so much for watching.